Hello and welcome to episode 63 of a weekly gaming news 10 and 10. This episode is for the week ending June 9th, 2018. Sony gets bit by bad editing again. This time on Bungie's reveal video of the next expansion, Forsaken. In the video, widely available at about the 2 minute 42 second mark, there's a developer working with an Xbox controller. When Sony posted a video on their site, they blurred out the Xbox controller. Once attention was brought to this edit, Sony took down the video. Remember last year, Sony poorly edited their inputs over Xbox inputs in an Anthem video. Crackdown 3 has been delayed until 2019. Originally scheduled to release in 2017 and then changed to spring of 2018, Microsoft has pushed the game back to February 2019. Microsoft noted that they are giving a development team more time and will be showing more of the game at their E3 briefing. J.J. Abrams launches Bad Robot Game Division after significant investment from Chinese company Tencent. J.J. Abrams, who is known for big budget films such as the Star Trek reboot as well as Star Wars The Force Awakens and the upcoming Star Wars Episode 9, will be venturing into gaming full bore. With previous experience on Pastime, 18 Fortress 2 mode, and Spy Janks, an unreleased game co-developed with Chair. The plan is to develop large-scale indie games for mobile, PC, and consoles. Bungie secures a $100 million investment from Chinese company NetEase to work on projects outside of Destiny. In a statement, Bungie has assured that this will not affect work on the Destiny IP and that the investment will allow them to allocate resources to build new worlds and allow them to establish at least one internal development team separate from the group that works on Destiny. The next Destiny 2 expansion has been announced and is set to be released on September 4th. The expansion is set to take place in the Reef and will include a brand new raid which takes place in the Awoken's homeworld, Dream City. There's a new mode, Gambit, that combines v PvE and PvP elements. Bungie will be adding a Trump Tracker as well as Gear Collection Tracker. Subclasses are being reworked and a new weapon type, Bows, will be added. With the expansion announcement, Bungie also revealed that the Season Pass which will get you the next three content drops after the Forsaken DLC. You have the option to buy the new DLC only for $39.99 US or Forsaken bundled with the Season Pass for $69.99 or the $79.99 for a digital deluxe version. After about five years, EA powers up Skate 3 servers again. Originally released in 2010, EA started removing online features and drawing down servers in 2013. A YouTuber, X7Albert, indicates that the servers are now live. This may be foreshadowing an E3 announcement. Paradox acquires Hairbrain Schemes for $7.5 million. Hairbrain Schemes developed the Shadowrun series and most recently the turn-based strategy game Battletech. The two companies have been working together since 2017 when they signed a deal to bring Battletech to market. Paradox noted that Hairbrain Schemes will operate with its own internal management and creative teams, and they, Paradox, will assist with distribution, financial support, and design expertise. Red Dead Redemption 2 is getting a collector's box, which will not include the game. While there are several collectors and digital special editions for the game, the collector's box, priced at $99.99 US, comes with a few goodies. Included in the box is a cash lockbox a jigsaw puzzle, a pen set, a deck of playing cards, a coin, a bandana, an unrippable map, a dozen collectible trading cards, and a 150-page reproduction of the in-game merchant supply catalog. Pre-orders are currently live on Rockstar's digital store. Niantic drops the ban hammer on Pokemon Go, yet again. Since its release, Pokemon Go has been rife with cheaters and Niantic has been playing whack-a-mole. While Niantic rarely goes after individuals, they do ban third-party apps and this time around is no different. Niantic has banned a group of third-party apps and removed Pokemon acquired using the banned apps from players' accounts. Valve is taking a hands-off approach on Steam. In a lengthy blog post, Valve's Eric Johnson wrote that the company has decided that the correct approach will be to allow everything onto the Steam store and allow users and the market to decide what games are worthy. Mr. Johnson did note an exception, which is for content that is illegal or trolling. He also went on to note that Valve was working on advanced filters that will allow Steam users to filter out content that they individually feel is offensive. That will conclude this week's edition of a Weekly Gaming News 10 and 10. Before I sign off, I'd like to tell you about the new challengers. If you enjoy competition and camaraderie of the fighting game community and are looking to improve, the new challengers are for you. A strong, close-knit community that offers training, fight nights, tournaments, and more. You will have 
fight game community home with the new challenges. Supporting games such as Street Fighter V, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Injustice 2, Tekken 7, and more, head over to www.newchallenger.gg to learn more and sign up. And don't forget, if you'd like to hear more detail on these stories and more, join Trinell and myself for a weekly gaming news show live streamed on Facebook, Mixer, Twitch, and YouTube Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time.